Hi students, hope everyone is fine and safe. It gives me immense pleasure to welcome you all to my new video. And today's video is about another interesting topic in wireless sensor networks. We're going to see challenges and constraints in wireless sensor networks. This is one of the important questions in this particular unit, and this can be asked in 8 marks or 12 marks. So, first we'll see what are the different challenges in wireless sensor networks and then I'll explain each and every challenges one by one. Right. To start with, the important challenges of wireless sensor networks includes energy, self-management, wireless networking, decentralized management, design constraints, security challenges and other challenges. Right. And we already know what is wireless sensor networks, what are the importance of wireless sensor networks, what are the applications of wireless sensor networks through previous videos, okay? And this video speaks about the challenges of WSN, right? Uh, and very importantly, you ought to understand one particular thing, even though wireless sensor networks is applied in almost all the fields, it has a lot of challenges because most of the devices which is used are very small, tiny devices, right? So whatever protocols which you are going to use, whatever algorithms which you are going to use, right? That should support that particular device, right? And that is the greatest challenge in wireless sensor networks. And to start with, we will explain the first challenge, which is energy consumption, right? So energy consumption is the very vital challenge in wireless sensor networks, very important challenge in wireless sensor networks. That's because we all know that any particular sensor network that is created, right? Every sensor node will be a tiny node, right? And you have to understand that each and every node will have a battery or some, in some cases, you will have some solar uh, energy or something like that, right? So in many applications, you will use only rechargeable batteries or non-rechargeable batteries, right? Where do you use rechargeable batteries? Say, for example, depends upon the application, right? There will be an application where they will deploy sensor networks just to measure temperature, pressure, or some agriculture application, something like that, where they can able to recharge the battery, right? Because we will be able to access that particular wireless sensor nodes. But there are some areas where the sensor networks cannot be accessed after deployment. For example, battlefield, right? And uh, for uh, monitoring volcanoes like that, you'll not be able to go ahead and access the sensor networks which is already deployed. In that case, you will use only rechargeable batteries. And when you use rechargeable batteries for each and every sensor nodes, right? What is the my rechargeable batteries? You cannot able to recharge the battery, right? So that sensor network will work until there is an energy in that particular battery, correct? So energy consumption plays a vital role because uh, only if there is energy, the sensor network will work, correct? Right, and in that case, what will happen is each and every sensor network, the deployed sensor network, the lifetime of the sensor network will be, will be mentioned as mission time, mission time. What is mission time is nothing but the sensor network can able to work only until or unless there is charge in the battery, only there is energy in the battery, right? So whatever protocols which we use, whatever algorithms or whatever process or whatever hardware which is used in this particular sensor network, right? That has to consume only lower energy, only then this can work for a longer time, right? So this is the important challenge in wireless sensor network, right? And we say about this energy, normally in CMOS processes, the energy, it depends upon the switching energy and leakage energy, right? Uh, where C total is the total capacitance and VDD is nothing but the supply voltage and I leak is nothing but leakage current. And this is the time duration of computation, right? And mostly predominantly the processor energy is completely depend upon the switching energy. Maybe in future, in future processes, it will be uh, depending upon, mostly depending upon the leakage energy, right? You know what is leakage energy? The amount of energy that is getting wasted, right? There are a lot of techniques that is evolved to consume, to reduce the leakage energy. That is, uh, every sensor node can 
can able to uh, switch off its radio right whenever it is not transmitting any information or whenever it is not active it can uh, turn off itself so that it can preserve some energy right and there are some software uh, techniques as well which is called as dynamic voltage scaling which will also reduce the energy consumption right and apart from that the protocols which we use that is also very very important right that is we know that mac layer medium access control the mac layer is the one which provides the sensor about the access to the wireless channel right it provides the access to the wireless channel right and during that access it is very important that what protocols is preferred there are different protocols like contention based protocols and contention free protocols what is contention based protocols right what is contention based protocols in the sense there will be protocols right there will not be any rules and regulation you know that you have different sensor nodes you have different sensor nodes right and contention based protocols in the sense each and every node will try to access the channel without any rules and regulation it will try to transmit data right it will it will transmit data in the same channel so what will happen definitely the collision will happen and because of collision what will happen data loss can happen and the, the there will not be any successful transmission right and mac protocol has to take care of this particular uh, problem where the mac protocol is the one which which has to provide a successful transmission right but in contention based protocols you have huge challenge that's because there is no rules and regulation so each and every sensor nodes will contend with itself and then try to transmit data and what will, what will happen is in, there will be a collision and because of collision what will happen the sensor node has to recover from that particular collision and then it has to retransmit that particular data all this will increase the overhead right will increase the overhead and ultimately it will consume more energy right so predominantly contention based protocols will not be preferred right and whereas contention free protocols can be can be used because in contention free protocols there is there will be some regulation there will be some rules and regulation for transmission of data right that is the mac layer will, will, will regulate the transmission so that there will, the, it will prevent the collision and because of that what will happen the energy will be consumed very less right so the energy consumption is a very important challenge in WSN, and in that you have to explain all these things okay and the second important challenge is self-management what is self-management right in order to manage itself right so in that in self-management you have to speak about ad hoc deployment and as well as unattended operation right first i'll tell you what is ad hoc deployment what is ad hoc networks first of all what is ad hoc networks ad hoc networks is network which is created on time on demand right that is uh, without any rules and regulation it, it we can create the adapt network that is for example you four people that is your friends will can create a network using share it right and you can share among uh, yourself right the files photos and everything you'll share among with four mobiles right in that case that is called as adapt network right and it can, it can be four cell phones or two laptops and two mobile phones anything why is that we say it as ad hoc because there is no rules and regulation right you'll be creating the network uh, with four friends suddenly two friends will left and another two friends can join right and similarly you'll be working in the fourth floor then uh, you will break that network and you will go to the third floor and you will create another network like that right so there is no infrastructure in it there is no rules and regulation there is no infrastructure that is called as ad hoc deployment right so even here in sensor networks we can mostly in in some applications in many applications ad hoc deployment plays a vital role for example in battle areas and in disaster areas we, we will not be able to go ahead and uh, deploy sensor networks manually right what we can do is uh, in battlefield the sensor networks are thrown from the aircraft in disaster areas the sensor nodes can be it will be thrown uh, from the aircraft in that case what are the challenges it will face the sensor network space first thing when you throw sensor networks from such heights some sensor nodes will not be able to function right some sensor nodes will be destroyed 
right for example if you're going to throw a thousand sensors almost 200 to 50 sensors will not be able to work it can be more than that just for an example i'm telling right so remaining you'll be having only 750 sensors these 750 sensors must be self managing sensors right what is self managing it has to recover from the fog right and then what it has to do it has to create a network it has to self configure it has to communicate with other nodes right it has to con communicate with other nodes it has to transmit the data everything has to be done by itself right that is very very important right so this is very important challenge and in depends upon the application self management out of deployment is very very important challenge in wsn so whatever sensor networks which we create or sensor nodes it should be able to manage simply right that is it should be able to adapt to the environment to change its parameters everything has to be done by itself right and what is unattended operation same similarly the same example i'm telling the same example unattended operation in the sense right that there will be areas where we will create a sensor network right we will deploy a sensor network and after that we will not be able to go out and access we can just get the information from the sensor network as i said back battlefield in military applications in disaster areas right uh, we will not be able to go ahead and check what is happening exactly right we can get the data from that right and only up to the mission time only only until there is energy we can able to get that information correct and as i said it has to function in autonomous fashion autonomous fashion it has to self configure it has to adapt by itself all those things as i said right and if you say self management it has to undergo all these things it has to satisfy all these things self managing self organization self optimization self protection and self healing right what is self managing as i said as soon as it get dropped right it has to recover from the drop right and then what it has to do it has to configure itself right it has to create a network it has to communicate with the neighbors all those things right that is self managing right and what is self organization it's not about managing organizing itself that is what it has to do it has to organize its its configuration parameters it has to change the parameters for example it should be able to analyze the transmission power that is required to connect with the other device to other nodes something like that right so it has to configure its own parameters self organizing and what is self optimization it has to be it has to optimize its own resources right whatever resource it has the energy right whatever it has it has to optimize it according to the situation according to the environment and self protection definitely you will have a lot of threats that is in battlefield you will have attackers intruders and all those things correct right so that sensor network should be capable of self protecting from these threats right and another important thing is not about only protection even if there is any destruction happen it has to self heal itself and it should start functioning right so this is about self management this is an important challenge in wsn right thank you students thank you for watching kandipa indha video ungalku ellarku romba useful ah irukum nambara subscribe passionate professor and keep learning thank you very much